Hey, hello guys, welcome back. One of the most frequently asked questions that I get on my chat box and in my comment sections is how did you learn English, right? So I don't know, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have a straight answer because I, maybe because I just did it my own way. So I don't know how to tell you. There, there are lots of things that I did and a lot of things that I didn't do as well as you know, regular English learners do. So that's a question that I can answer effectively. So why don't we ask that question to the most intelligent person on Earth, on planet Earth, AI, right? Artificial intelligence. So let's ask him, oh no, it's not a him, her, no. It doesn't have a gender, right? Sorry, AI, if I misgendered you, <laughs> I'm sorry. So uh, let's ask AI what the best way to learn English is. He might have. I'm sorry, not he. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. <laughs> it might have a better idea. Okay, let's go. All right, so here we are. We're gonna ask AI, chat GPT, the best way to learn English, okay? All right, so without further ado, let's go right to the point. What is the best way to learn English? AI, the most intelligent thing, person, <laughs> not really person, right? But now they say it can be sentient. AI is sentient or beginning to have the element of being sentient. So maybe we can call it person, AI, right? So anyway, it has given us 10 points here, 10. Okay, 10 pointers. All right, so <clears throat> this is AI's answer. The best way to learn English can vary depending on individual preferences, learning styles, and goals. However, here are some effective methods that many learners find helpful. Okay, so it doesn't have the ultimate best way to learn English, of course, but, you know, it says, uh, here are some effective methods that many learners find helpful. So maybe we can find some of them helpful as well. So. Let's take a look at it. Okay, the first one is immersive experiences. Uh, so, okay, what it means is surround yourself with English as much as possible by watching English language movies and TV shows, listening to English music and podcasts, and reading English books, newspapers, and websites. Of course, that's important. And you know, this reminds me of my talk with a uh, Filipino doctorate, by the way, uh, I'm still grateful for him for showing up and you know for uh, giving us a little bit of uh, the insights as to learning English. So, yeah, salamat po if you're watching, salamat po, and thank you to uh, brother Shane as well, Shane for introducing him to me. Thank you to both of you. Thank you very much. So that's what he said in the video, right? Immersive experience. You gotta immerse yourself in that environment that language speaking environment to be able to learn it in real life, right? So, of course, number one is immersive experience. That's what I do, by the way. I surround myself with English. That's very true with me. Uh, whatever I do, it's all English. I would, I would plug in my earphones and listen to a podcast. When I get up, it's all about English. I, the first thing I do in the morning is uh, listening to, listening to a podcast, listening to news, all in English. And when I take a shower, I listen to podcasts. So that's very true with me. Uh, okay, so that's one. And number two is language exchange. Find a language partner to join. I'm sorry. Find a language partner or join a language exchange program where you can practice English with native speakers while helping them learn your native language. Well, language exchange, I think there is a term uh, for this. But anyway, if you can find, of course, it's great, of course. But number two, I would say it's not really realistic. Uh, it's not feasible rather than unrealistic. It's not, uh, it's not easily feasible, okay? Number three is structured learning. Enroll in English classes or courses, either in person or online where you can receive guidance from qualified instructors and interact with other learners. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's a great one. And number four is 
vocabulary building. Vocabulary building is so important. Yes. Okay. What does it mean? Regularly learn new words and phrases, and try to use them in sentences to reinforce your understanding. Flashcards, vocabulary apps, and reading can help. Reading can all help with this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Uh, vocabulary building. Um, what do I do for this? Um, I used to keep notebooks, but these days I do not. I just listen. All right. So number five is a grammar practice. You know, I'm so impressed with the order, the order of the list, not the content of the list, but by the order of the list. You see, first uh, is immersive experience. Uh, and number two is exchange, the language exchange. And third is structured learning, you know, joining classes. And number four is a vocabulary building. And then, only then comes grammar. So grammar doesn't come first. That's what's Im impressive about uh, this list. I don't know if this is programmed by some, you know, people, some real people. This must be uh at least out of you know thousands and thousands of sources so i doubt that this is the uh, practice this, this is uh physically done by a human which can be the case in some something related to politics right even though chat gpt is 100 percent uh automatic and electronic it can still be manipulated if they want to this is a little going off topic. Okay, let's get back to the topic. Grammar practice comes at number five. Of course, grammar is important. You know, I've always maintained the position that I, I don't teach grammar first. I don't learn. I didn't learn grammar first. Um, <clears throat> grammar is important. You have to do it. We have. You have to do it because if you want to learn the language systematically, academically, grammatically, you, you gotta do grammar. You can't skip, you can't circumvent grammar because whatever you read, you listen to, uh, the, the sentences you speak, it's all grammar. So you gotta, you gotta be correct, okay? You better be correct. <laughs> so it's important. But uh, just don't start with it. I'm not for it. I'm not for starting with grammar. But of course, in especially after you reach, let's say, intermediate level, you gotta do grammar. All right, next is, uh, number six is language applications. Use language applications, language learning applications and software that offer interactive lessons, exercises, and quizzes to help you improve your English skills at your own pace. Yes, that's uh, right as well. And if you're in Myanmar, I think we have a few apps. Saya, Saya app is a great one. So, um, <clears throat> and uh, what, what other apps do we have in from Myanmar? I'm talking about from Myanmar. So uh, the, the only thing I know is Saya. And if you're in other countries, maybe you know Promova. And you know that there are many, many other apps. But out of Myanmar, uh, Saya is the only one I know. So, um, and um, <clears throat> at number seven, at number seven, we have consistent practice. Oh, I love this one because I'm all for consistency, right? Uh, consistency is the key. I think I said this exact phrase, exact sentence. Consistency is the key in my interview with, actually, when I was being interviewed by this uh, Korean English language teacher. Uh, no matter how great you are, not, no matter how fast you learn a language, if you don't do it consistently, if you lose touch, you're gonna get rusty, you're gonna eventually forget even the words and the sentences. So, consistency is key. It's the key. So, um, okay, it says, make a habit of practicing English regularly, even if it's just for a short time each day. Consistency is key to making steady progress. So true, so true. I can't agree more with this. Okay, number eight, and number eight, they have seek feedback. Okay, this is the one thing that I didn't do. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Yes, that's so true. If, if you're making mistakes, that means you are actually working, right? You are actually working trying to improve so uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes instead use them as opportunities to learn and improve seek feedback from teachers language partners or online communities to help identify areas for improvement 
And uh, number nine, at number nine, we have cultural Im cultural immersion. Learn about English speaking cultures and customs to better understand the context in which language is used. This can enhance your this can enhance your language skills and cultural competence. Okay, so what you can do for this is it only gives it only gives us uh, tips, right? So it doesn't give us examples, but in the previous ones, they give us hints and uh, examples. But number nine, I think they should have given us AI should have given us um, at least how we can immerse ourselves in the culture, in the English speaking culture. For that, I would recommend watching movies, you know, just watch uh, YouTube videos as well, you know, English speaking countries, YouTube videos. YouTube videos from English speaking countries, I mean. And at number 10, set realistic goals. That's, that's so important. Okay, let's, uh, okay, let me read what it says first. Set achievable goals for your English learning journey. Whether it's mastering specific skills, passing language proficiency exams, or simply becoming more fluent, more confident in your abilities. Breaking larger goals to similar manageable tasks can keep you motivated and focused. Yes. When we set unrealistic goals, which we often do as humans because, you know, we are prone to temptations to do, to get things done fast, right? So you, you, you might set a goal to memorize 10 words a day. That's huge. 10 words a day is no, it's not an easy job. It's not an easy thing, so it's too much. Uh, so set realistic goals, maybe two words a day, or maybe 10 words a week. That's very doable, right? If you feel like you are failing yourself, you don't live up to your expectations, you know, that, that, that can be very discouraging. So don't do that. Set realistic goals. And if you can, don't even set goals. Just do it. Just do it as, you know, what I, what I would add here is make it, a part of your life. So if you're a 9 to 5 office uh, employee, maybe what you can do is just listen to some English stuff on your way to work. Incorporate the English language in your daily life, in what you do, right? So speak English sometimes, uh, write emails in English, you know, text to your friends in English. And that's what I mean by make it part of your life. Make it a part of your life. All right, so hopefully um, you learned something. I, I think I did learn something. So anyway, thank you so much. And if you want to join my vocabulary class, let me know. It's opening in a few days. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your support always. Thank you. God bless.